Good afternoon, people. I hope you're all doing all right. Bit of a weird start to this video. I come round to editing it and I've lost the intro footage as my memory card got corrupted. So without any context, it won't make any sense. We were just looking for a walk last minute and we come across a walk called A Swindale Round. I'll show you the website I find all my information on. So there's a guy called Stuart Marshall who wrote this book. It's called Walking the Wainwrights and he's done all the Wainwrights in 36 walks as you'll probably know from the other videos as I've previously talked about it. And the website is called Complete the Wainwrights in 36 Walks. If you're looking to bag some Wainwrights, they're all here, as you can see. Gives you the mileage, the height and when you click on them it tells you the times. And um, We decided to take this one on last minute. It was rated six to seven hours, 10 miles. Um, what I tend to do is go on View Ranger and find someone who's actually done the walk before. And this guy called Paul Davies, he seems to follow a lot of the routes. And as you can see here, in comparison, you know, it's the same thing. So I'd done a bit of reading the night before about this walk. And as you can see on Paul's reviews, people had said it ends horribly the last few miles and I'd read a few reviews of this walk and other people had said that. You know, me being me, I just took it on anyway. And with it being winter, we've got eight hours of light. Unfortunately, where you can see where Paul's parked here, here's my route. I had to park further up the road as I seen this sign, no parking beyond this point. And with the conditions, my car was struggling in the ice. So I was thinking, oh, I don't really want to drive further down the road. So we scrapped that and ended up walking to where we would have parked, which added on about 15 minutes each way. The weather was meant to be fine all day and to be honest, there was a snowstorm. And if you know anything about winter walking and walking in snow, it just slows you down. So when I actually get to the video, it was quite funny to look back on. You'll see a lot of rants about how bad this walk was. When you followed this guy's route, yeah, he follows paths as you do. You can see this, is, this signifies a path these dotted lines. So we've done all the way in right on the list. And the mad thing is with this Stuart Marshall's guide is, look at this, so he sends you off a path. And if you look here, we were walking and we ended up walking through rivers, what, three or four times there before we connected to another path. And then we had to go up the side of a mountain. You were walking through bogs and grass and obviously with it being snow over the top you couldn't see a thing he's got a book for sale on amazon and i'm not sure how he comes up with the routes but i've been following a few of them and don't get me wrong some are great great circulars all packed but this one in particular was stupid and with it being winter and in snow shouldn't have went on it to be honest but we went down so many holes we, we even had to cross the rivers and you couldn't see the river or the water because of the snow and we both got soaked our boots went through and everything there was a stage where i started to panic because it was going dark and i was more worried about the fact that one of us could have got seriously injured because you're sort of playing roulette where you're walking as you can't see pats and I'm at, i didn't want to get injured and it to go dark and then you know had to call mountain rescue or whatever mistake on my part to be honest sometimes wainwright bagging in the winter is probably not a good idea it ends up taking us seven hours and 36 minutes and it ends up being 13 miles just be careful people when you're doing walks in the winter and always check your routes hope you enjoyed the video and have a good laugh like i did and i hope you all have a good christmas take it easy people Emwus was saying that the weather today is actually sunny, but the wind chill is minus 2 to minus 15 degrees. So it could be a cold one on the top of the fells. We're wrapped up, got our spare gear in the bags. The snow's fairly soft, so shouldn't need crampons or anything like that. It's crazy to think, just over a week ago we were on one fell pike and I was wearing a t-shirt. And the change in weather, man, is like madness. What a sight though, man. Unbelievable. So this looks like where we were originally meant to park. Just here. But there's not much room to turn around anywhere else. And 
unless you've got a four by four mate i'd be very careful it's only added on 15 minutes to the journey anyway so it's not too bad i've actually been walking down this lane for 30 minutes now long the robin just following us here he's coming for a walk so we're starting to make our ascent now according to view range we're going to pass round the forest and then up and over the ridge can't see any of the path because of the snow but there is actually footprints here which is a good thing nice boggy path and if you can just see in the hills here it's about four deer good sight man having an absolute nightmare already you tell me where there's a path there We've just been in these bushes getting lost and now we're just making our own path on the way up. You cannot see anything, it's so deep the snow. It's a good foot below and you just sink them. So hopefully we can get up here and just make our own way because when I'm on the GPS and it's saying I'm on the path, you can't see anything, mate. It doesn't feel like you're on a path either. So it's going to take a long time to get up here. But Dom's making our own path there. <sighs> Try and get back onto it in a second. This is going to be a long day mate, I'm telling you. We're going to have to make track soon and just crack on because this snow slows you down man. It's zaps your energy as well. So we're actually back on path now. Finally, some footprints. Start to see a bit of snowfall as well. Apparently it's meant to be sunny today but non-existent. You can just see little droplets of snow now. So we finally made it up to the ridge line. Just a bit more ascent to go. Don't know if you can see, but it's snowing. And look over there. Visibility is starting to disappear. To be honest, the weather report didn't even say it was that bad for snow today. Just have to assess the situation later on if it gets bad, the weather. But it's okay for now. So we're just following his footprints. Look at this. Look how deep some of them are. Good job someone's actually walking ahead of us. As I said before, the path, you can't see it. Non existent in snow. My boots disappearing. You'd be so slow as well if you were walking through all of that. Don't eat yellow snow, people. Looking grim up here. 70% chance of cloud free summits. Don't think that applied to Shap, mate. We're not far off Selsar Pike, which is 655 metres, but it's just slow. We might have to come back at some point, but we're doing okay for time as is. It's about 10 o'clock now. Need to be down for at least 4 hour 4 Got torches with us and stuff Wanna be on that lane now because that's a 30 minute walk back to the car Just coming up to the summit Selsar Pike Selsar Pike, 655 metres Just reading the way in right book and he said there, there was a ton of stone There's a cairn, someone's built a little shelter here by the looks of it But yeah We're heading over that way in a minute towards Brandsey, down the fence line. So we're three and a half miles in and one hour and 55 minutes for the first one. Three more to go after this and then we'll assess the situation and see what way we're going to get back down because this snowstorm hasn't stopped for an hour. You can actually see the path running up the mountain to the next one. Can I start moving quick? It's actually alright snow up here at this part though, so you can move at a normal speed. Just having a little look on the map then and there's a summit behind us up there called High House and it says that it's a subsidiary summit of Brandsville but not the actual official one so I'm just going to skip that out the guy I'm following on view range he's actually went up there but we're not going to have time we'll just go to the proper summit and skip it so we're not far off the summit of Brandsville I'm so tired from walking through this snow and we've got Probably two thirds of the walk to go. It's around 11 o'clock now, so not too bad. Should be okay, but we're probably gonna scrap the idea of coming back from where we started and just go through that bog towards the end. The clouds starting to clear a bit and the snow starting to slow down, which is a good sign. So we just dust us off the summer cairn. Ordnance survey. That was just covered. 
out. That's literally just being covered in snow. But yeah, this is the summer of Brandsea. So in the way, right, Buki said that there was not actually a summer, but this has been built since obviously he wrote those books. Because I've seen this a few times on the internet. Quite cool, actually. But look at that, frozen over, done water. Solid. We actually passed by here when we done Mosdale Botty a couple of months back and I didn't even know this was here. Didn't see on the map. Energy here, mate. So this brand's tree is 713 metres. And our next on the list is Tarn Crag, which is about 640. So it's a bit lower than this, but I think we've got a big descent. But you can't see anything again. Snow's back. Nightmare. I haven't seen a person either. Just fueling up now and then. Crack on. Mosdale Bothy Cottage is over here to the left, just behind that hill. We were going to go and have a look at it because Dom hasn't been, but unfortunately we haven't got time. So looking on the GPS, we're following this fence line, and as you can see, <laughs> Dom just went on her ass. You all right? Straight down and home. Yeah, we're following this fence line straight up there and over. I think I might have to put my wet pants on. Bottom of my pants are getting soaked. Nice little ascent up here. You can see this stuff. And over there. <laughs> There's just water everywhere. We were lucky not to go down a few of those holes. You can hear the ice cracking under your feet. That has got to be the worst scent I've ever done. It doesn't even look bad, but I'm so tired. I've never regretted coming on a walk as much as this. We still got about four hours of daylight, so we should get down, but we're just gonna have to take the boggy path and take the it. There's no way I'm walking back that way. So we're just coming up to the summit of Tarn Crag. Just in front there, Tarn Crag summit. 664 metres. It's actually in the Wainwright books. Used to use it in observation tower years ago, but this is the actual summit here. I'm not wasting time, so have a look. We need to start moving quick. So that's three down, one more to go. Grey crag. This weather's getting atrocious, man. The visibility dropped so much, as you can probably tell. But not fun anymore. Absolutely knackered. I've still got about five miles to go. The sun is finally making an appearance. Look at that. Some nice views now. Hopefully that stays out all day now. Be nice on our descent back down. And actually see where you're going. Grey crag. 638 metres. We actually just got a good view then, but I didn't get it on video. You could see all the mountains behind and he disappeared again. But that's the last one of the day, the fourth way in right. We're gonna have to go down that nasty route on the way back. But we're doing all right for time. It's only 10 to 1, so should be enough light. So this is the bonus round one, Harrop Pike. 637 metres. Not actually a wane right, but I had to bag it on the way past. We're hoping this path isn't as boggy as people are saying, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. And the wind's starting to get cold now, it's just starting to pick up. So after reading those reviews about the descent back down being a bog, we have been coming through grass, but it's been dry at the moment, probably because it's frozen. But you were just following this fence line now down. It is in the general direction where we need to go. Oh, as you can see, I just went down a hole. When Stuart Marshall's done some of his routes, I think he's just cutting across onto other paths, which is probably stupid, but I'm just going off what he's saying. Visibility is completely dropped again. This is the worst it's been all day, and it's freezing now. The wind chill literally put my waterproof pants on just to uh, protect my pants and my ankles. As you can see, straight down an hole, mate. And then Dom followed me into the same hole. <laughs> And it was about three foot deep in water. Got a wet right foot now. People weren't lying about this route on the way back. It's just grass. Can't see nothing. And we're just playing roulette, mate, where we're walking. The only positive is that we are actually descending slowly. I don't know how this Stuart Marshall's making these routes up, man, but we've just jumped over two rivers, right? <laughs> walking like mega slow to get across them. Stupid. We 
mate i don't think i've ever been so scared in my life i've just spent probably the last two or three hours panicking mate in the mountains there look at it up there we've just come down here down the path look at that where we was this morning clear starting to clear up them routes i don't even understand how he's selling a book to be honest on amazon when he's sending people in goose chases walking across all sorts down holes everywhere mate both of our feet are soaked dodging rivers mate and that's snow as you can see this is where we was this morning look at the road it's just snowed for hours that is probably the stupidest walk i've ever done by miles but luckily it's only half three we were panicking thinking it was gonna go dark in the mountains and then we eventually got onto a path which was fairly straightforward back down but we couldn't see anything and i'm glad to just be on road level whether i'll be able to get my car out i don't know but at least i can stay warm in there for the time being 